Hey, Brian. Hello. Hey. Hi. So this is Brian Prager, who is a, oh gosh, tell me what year you are, third year? Rising third year, yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. Ah, I feel so old. So okay. <laughs> Brian Prager's a rising third year grad student at UVA. Uh, no, because I remember when he started. I was doing one of the workshops. Three years ago. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian, where, uh, so you're in Charlottesville, Virginia. Are you actually at the office? Are you home? I'm at the office right now. You're at the office. Yay. Uh, don't scare the janitor by sleeping on the couch. I did that. He already saw times. me, so. Oh, okay. So you're good. Okay. Um, and you are a current member of Dark Skies Bright Kids. We were just, uh, Abel and I were reminiscing uh, what, what it was like doing the activities, doing wiggle time, uh, d uh, doing uh, things Can with liquid nitrogen. Can you do wiggle time with our audience? <laughs> Can I do wiggle time with our audience? Yes. You want me to run around the attic? Yes. Let's get Joe up here. Have everyone do payload tag. <laughs> oh, I haven't heard this one. Oh, What's payload one. tag? So payload tag is where we have the kids actually carry each other on their back and run around like rockets, and they drop the payload off halfway through. <laughs> That's fantastic. I never did that because my knees hurt, so I didn't do wiggle time. So do you do you participate in wiggle time? Um, I've done it once or twice. Okay. As a third year, I'm now getting more time to go out to some of those events. So. Yes, that's right. Now you're done with your classes. Congratulations. That's a big step. <laughs> that's a big step. Have you done Kesslio Ori? I have not. Okay, I was trying to trying to understand. I was trying to trying to remember what the rules of that game were, um, but I, I don't. Yes, Pamela did put her Google glasses on the stuffed bear yeah. um, behind it's the us. The bear of charging. The bear of charging. I'll, I'll share. I'll share a picture on Google Plus so you can see what I mean. So, so Brian, what um, what is DSBK up to now? When it started, uh, it was a ragtag bunch of volunteers going out to schools uh, with very little clue of how to do uh, education with children. Where are you guys now? So right now, we are still holding to one of the main goals. We go out to uh, urban schools and we try and teach kids to enjoy science. You want rural schools? Sorry. Sorry what? Rural schools. Rural schools. Sorry. Sorry. It's a little early here. So we go out to rural schools, we try and get kids interested in science, we make them think that they can be scientists too, and we try and teach them generally to have fun with, you know, exploring the world around them. And uh, asking questions, I remember that was a big thing too. Right. We, we want them to ask as many questions yeah. as they can. We love when they can, you know, come up with crazy things that we have to, you know, look up and come back to them next week, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we would give stickers uh, to them, not for answering questions, but for asking good questions. Right. And to encourage encourage that behavior. Um, what about the star parties? A uh, part of dark skies, bright kids is right. You want to be out under the dark skies. What is that like? All right. So we have a uh, star party, as you said, where you know once or twice a year we go out. We invite everyone around in the uh, Charlottesville, Albemarle County area, and we just take them out and show them the night sky. We bring the telescopes out. We show them all the constellations. We explain science. We bring some of our best demos. We just try and get the community interested in astronomy and dark skies. Cool, cool. Um, and so in a, 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 we, we mentioned that um, one of the main goals is going out to a school uh, several weeks in a row. Um, how, and how much demand is, is Dark Skies Bright Kids these days? Oh, we have a lot of people asking for us now. We actually have like a queue of about a year or two before we can get to any school. So. Wow, wow. Yeah, I know uh, if, you, um, if you go to, oh gosh, the URL is www.astro.virginia.edu slash DSBK. Um, okay. That is, uh, you guys have a, an actual contact form there where uh, schools in the Central Virginia area can request Dark Skies Bright Kids uh, to actually come to their school. But you've got, you know, uh, uh, again, a... a group of volunteers that are mostly uh, graduate students uh, doing research and classes and doing this on the side. Um, so yeah, you guys can only hit a few, you know, a few schools at a time or one school at a time. Yeah, we love it, but we just don't always have the time to go out to every school that wants us there, so. Yeah, yeah. So, so we now have Joe up in the attic, and we're going to do wiggle time with Joe and Nicole. Oh, damn it! Because <laughs> <laughs> somebody needs to control the camera. Um, and, and I don't run around, sorry. I don't either. Yeah, you do. I you see know. you do it all the time. Yes. All right, Brian, you got to take us through wiggle time. <laughs> and I will go man the camera. <laughs> and, and we are doing humiliate the grad student and humiliate the postdoc um, to 
bring in money. So I'm asking these two people to run around like dorks at 3.30 in the morning on a Saturday because we're up. trying to raise money for science. Can I have like 30 minutes to go drink something that's not on our gun? No. no. <laughs> We're doing it now. Uh, we probably can't hear as well, so you may have to repeat Brian's instructions to us. Okay. If you're closer to the camera. So, Brian. All right. This is, this is your chance to make me run around like a fool. And, and this is where you guys, I'm going to pick up the camera. I'm not picking Joe up. No, no one's picking Joe up. Joe can pick up Nicole. That's not that difficult. That's it's probably been done before. Down. Okay. So, I'm going to ah sit back down. Okay, so I have the camera on Nicole and Joe. What should they be doing? All right, we're going to make you guys act like a rocket. This is how we okay. get you a little bit, you know, worn out and interested in what we're going to do for the day. We usually do this when we're launching rockets. So what I want Joe to do. You're going to take Nicole and, you know, lift her up on your back, sort of a piggyback style. <laughs> now, it doesn't look like you have too much room to run around, but the idea is you run you know, about halfway through your goal, and then you drop her off like you would a payload on a rocket, and you try and go the rest of the way. Okay, so your goal is to run around, drop off your payload where it belongs, and then run back. So, so I'm thinking, deposit her over in the chair in the corner. Okay, Lord, else. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 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 That's a payload doing it. Make it. <laughs> <laughs> I love how stoic Joe was through all of that. Yes, yes, this is exactly what this is. This is But but I I know you you work the opposite of the children. <laughs> So. You're a good payload. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> so that So imagine that with uh, all like 15 screaming children. They love it. They love racing each other. They love being the payload, being the rocket. <laughs> Show isn't allowed to do outreach with kids. <laughs> <sighs> I'm all out of breath now while Pamela fixes the camera. Um, gosh, I hope you enjoyed that. Please donate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Um, so did you? So um, uh, uh, we talked a bit about doing a lot of hands-on demos um, with student with the, the the students at DSPK. That's right. Did you have Do you have any that you brought with you? So I do have one demo. It's actually right behind me. You can't see it too well right now, but it's the IR camera. Looking at so it, IR is infrared. Yeah. So They're why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So this camera picks up heat. It's a lot like a night vision goggles, where you can see the warmth coming off of something. I have a couple different demos to demonstrate this. So you probably can't see what I just put down. What it is, it's a regular ordinary mug. It's right here. I, I've drunk out of that around. mug. What? I have drunk out of that mug <laughs> before. <laughs> I recognize it. But when I add a bit of hot water to it, try and do this without spilling all over my laptop, <laughs> it suddenly starts to glow. If I can get it in there. Whoa, here we oh. go. <laughs> I can do this and put the actual pot right next to it. Even hotter. What's happening? Oh, water everywhere. 
happening is I'm getting myself wet. Um, <laughs> what's happening is you're actually seeing all the heat coming off of that, which you can't see in regular light. It's invisible to the regular eye. So another way of demonstrating that is I have a cup right here, right? You can't see through it. Do you know how much water's in it? Want to take a guess? I'm going to guess three quarters full. Well, let's see what we get. <laughs> Ooh! About halfway, you're about right. Hey, almost. Yeah. So what? So what do you have in there? So that's blue as opposed to the white of the hot water. Yeah. So the hot is white and red. Cooler is a darker blue color. It's the interest of a Joe. What are we doing? Well, I have three different things right here. That's the cool, and then this, that black, like a nice black hole, is ice water. <laughs> Oh gosh, I'm being... So we showed the kids that. We try and show them how heat actually puts out light and different types of light because it shows up in different colors in the IR camera. Yeah, so then uh, can you put yourself in, in the field of view? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you've got it set up there. It's false, false color. color. Trying to get in the view here. There we go. Oh, there he is. <laughs> So there's a, a warm you Brian. You can see my mouth change colors too. <laughs> but the kids love standing in front of this camera. What's that? They love to be able to see themselves in different colored light. Kids love to be in front of that camera. Yes. Oh my gosh, they do. Yes, that is true. Uh, we put the kids in front of that camera and uh, give them ice cubes. Oh yeah. Yeah. So one of the fun they things. They love the ice cubes. About to get water everywhere again. <laughs> Making a mess of is that the conference room? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. object. With ice, you can give yourself makeup. You can give yourself a nice mustache. <laughs> <laughs> All over yourself. <laughs> give yourself a smiley face. <laughs> Where, where can I get one of these? Uh, they cost what half a grad student. Can't see it. <laughs> yeah, they, and the kids love it because they're like, oh, look, I'm painting my hair blue, but not really. And yeah, it's really cute. So, so uh, yeah, Joe asks how we can get one of these cameras. <laughs> Do they actually sell these online? Mm -hmm. um, they're pretty common, actually. You're away from your microphone. Sorry. So they're pretty common, actually. You can just buy them online. It's not hard to get them. But I don't that one costs, them. what, a good 10000 I'm going to add it to our wish list on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite DSPK demo that I can't do here because we don't have one. It's definitely a really great one for kids. And so this one fits into a larger invisible light week, right? Right. So during the invisible light week, we take this out. We take out UV beads as well. We take them out into the sun so they can see how the actual light from the sun changes the beads color. Yep. We use sun, uh, sun lotion to show how you can block out that light. And that there's all sorts of light that is just not normal, you know, not light that they can't see typically. Uh, yeah, and I that's when I used to bring in my uh, my kitchen strainer and uh, battery operated radio and make a little Faraday cage out of that as well. Uh, and uh, they thought that they thought that was great because I had a plastic one and a metal one, and I had them guess what was going on and all that fun stuff. So yeah, that's uh, this is the, so if you 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 interested a Joe. <laughs> So uh, the, these uh, these demos work well for for all ages, but they um, really do engage the kids in an inquiry-based activity. Um, and I think this is something uh, you guys are putting out these lesson plans as well. Um, I, I know. Right, we're putting out lesson plans for teachers to try and incorporate some of these demos into their class. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> So, um, yeah, a lot of these um, these uh, inquiry-based activities are important for the uh, science standards, especially the next generation science standards, which are coming out in the U.S. Um, it's uh, been written by uh, representatives from 26 different states. Unfortunately, Virginia is not one of them, but hopefully it's, it's coming down the pipeline at some point. Uh, but all these inquiry-based activities uh, are really helpful for teachers who want to incorporate more hands-on learning in the classroom. Uh, and so these are, you know, a lot of these activities we really, you know, put together, you know, they, there are similar types of activities around the web and, and you guys put them together. Uh, but there are a few, few like, like, like um, 
Leo Cass Ori, the Wiggle Time, uh, some of these things that uh, just completely came out of uh, grad students avoiding research <laughs> for a day of the week and, and uh, getting to do outreach with kids. <laughs> um, can you tell us more? So you've been with DSBK for... I started in my first year. Oh, so you're one of the dedicated ones. You did it when you were still in classes. Yeah, I, I tried to get out as much as I can to do it because it's really fun to be with the kids. And so what have you gotten out of this um, uh, towards your, and, and Abel as well, what have you gotten out of uh, doing outreach with, with elementary school kids as, as a grad student? I mean, in my case, it really helps me sort of conceptualize what I'm trying to tell them. Like, I have to make sure I bring it down to their level and get them interested in science. It really helps me with getting people to appreciate astronomy. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I think it's really about communication as well and being engaging. It's one thing to say, you know, talk about your research, and it's another to talk about your research in a way that third graders can understand. Yeah. And, and sometimes they ask, even though they don't know the science and they don't know the big words, they ask some of the most insightful questions. Um, and so uh, you get them <coughs> at a point before it's uncool to ask questions um, and when they, their, their minds are still open to that, which is really fun. So um, what does uh, DSBK have planned in the future? There are there other projects going on outside of the, um, the after-school clubs? Well, one of the big projects we have right now is we're actually trying to uh, manufacture a book that we're spreading around the world to just sort of get people used to like the planets, the stars, astronomy in general. We're translating it into Spanish. We're translating it into a couple different languages right now. It's still in the production phase, but we're hoping it's going to come out soon. Yeah. Um, the, the, oh gosh, this is the this started as an art project um, that was done for one of the uh, students whose primary language was Spanish. Um, she was kind of quieter and, and kept to herself and pulled away from the group a bit. Um, and so uh, Laura, one of our volunteers who was an education major at the time, um, made these this art out of this this collage construction paper and and uh, had the it's, it's names. truly beautiful. Yeah, had the names in English and Spanish. Um, and so the book is called Snapshots of the Universe. Uh, I don't know what the Spanish title for that is. Um, and uh, yeah, so we had a bunch of grad students translate. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, we agonized <laughs> over the text of this book. Because none of us have written a children's book before. Um, and uh, I know uh, it was translated into Spanish. And uh, we had Greg Sivakov on the program earlier, who's involved in translating it into French as well for the Canadian audience. Um, and so that's been in production for a while. Do, can you tell us a little bit about the partnerships with that book? Um, I'm not too familiar with that right now. So okay. yeah, yeah, I, things are cha things are changing rapidly. Yeah, there's um, a lot of talk I, about it. We're trying to get everything figured out. So gotcha. Yeah, yeah, definitely a, a big project producing producing a children's book uh, when you're astronomy grad students. It's a, a totally cool project. I know uh, they, they've been trying to get partnerships in Chile, um, but I don't know uh, where where that's gone lately. So uh, anything else going on um, that you want to share uh, from DSBK? Well, one of the fun things we're doing, and I brought some of them here with me, we have mascots that we take out to the schools. And we're producing a, a blog online where we talk about different observatories. We show pictures of like mascots like this one. OK, what's that one's name? Yeah, that's, this one is Milky that's Way Mutu. What is it? Milky Way Mutu. Milky Way Mutu, OK. okay. <laughs> Astronaut cow. So we let the children at the schools name the uh, mascots. And they uh, really love this one. You can ask for it at a lot of different events to show up. We also yes. have some other ones who have been to some big observatories, like Sarah the Terrestrial Tiger. How did you let, get that away from Lisa May? Oh, I, I told her I was kidnapping him. <laughs> <laughs> I could never get that away from her. One of the grad students, not one of the students. <laughs> we also have Meteor Shower, who's another favorite. This is oh. from one of the older clubs from Red Hill. Yeah. One of the founding yeah. clubs. They love this guy. Yeah. You have the whole crew there. Yeah, I Buzz brought a couple. Of them. Yeah. Oh. So I'm helping actually write a uh, blog for these guys so we can try and get kids interested in science. Excellent. And we bring it down to their level, you know, make it seem like just a fun adventure from the perspective of these guys while trying to get them interested in what we're, you know, actually doing out in the world. Yeah, so that that's part of the um 
that also came out of the um, kind of the wiggle time ideas that uh, you know if a kid is acting up or getting distracted, you can hand them the mascot and be like, here, play with Buzznot, <laughs> hang out with Terra. Um, but then we take them all over the world and uh, and they get to see pictures of these guys. Uh, I had one of the little bees with me in South Africa. Uh, Buzznot's traveled with me. Buzznot met uh, James Randi. <laughs> I have a picture of Buzznot with James Randi. Um, yeah, and, and then, that's an idea that we've carried on with Chuck the Squirrel, and and this has been one of the really great things about being able to hire Nicole is she has all of this experience working with kids and all of these relationships with with uh, DSBK and and so we're working to build these relationships and I know wherever she goes with CosmoQuest. DSBK goes with her and so we've had a lot of your outreach activities and certainly comets, comets, comets at just about everything we've done as long as there hasn't been a health and safety concern. I draw the line when I have to fill out too much paperwork. Yes, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, so DSBK is doing great things and actually I don't know if you guys heard about this but uh, Gail Zazowski who's another DSBK alum gave a talk at AAS for uh, for middle school students and in her introduction uh, they talked specifically about how she worked with Dark Skies Bright Kids which is uh, quickly becoming a highly regarded outreach program within the American Astronomical Society. A lot of people are, are impressed with the work you guys are doing and uh, really making a name for DSBK with, uh, with the, the lesson plans you're putting out and uh, the incredible response you've gotten from the Central Virginia community. Uh, so it's, it's all awesome stuff uh, and I know that there's some work within the university to spread that to other science departments as well, I think. Right. Do you guys have a bigger collaboration that's growing too? We're trying to work with the chemistry department, which also has an outreach group, and we're trying to make it a bigger collaborative effort. Yeah, yeah. So uh -huh. you guys are actually building a proper science outreach program at UVA. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, there, we're, DSBK is spreading its alumni all over the globe. We've got Abel in Singapore right now, so uh, continuing, the, continuing the good outreach work uh, there. And when you have that book ready, we will certainly help promote it. Um, one of the things that we've tried to communicate over and over throughout this now, we're into what, uh, our 16? A lot. Yeah. A number. <laughs> And greater than 10. Yeah, of, of this Hangout. One of the things that we, we've worked to communicate over and over throughout this Hangout-a-thon is we are one community trying to, to do and share science. And um, your goals are our goals, and we will support you however we can. And we'd ask those of you who are out there watching, um, as we enter the wee hours of the morning here in North America and dinner time in Australia, um, our audience numbers are down a bit. Uh, there's still a lot of you out there, and that's kind of awesome. You can take a moment to tweet out uh, to get other people listening, other people engaged, and learning all the great things uh, that's going on. We'd really appreciate it. I've been watching as our comment tracker slows down and. I took my Google Glass off because the tweets just weren't coming in anymore. And uh, we can see the numbers fluctuating, so we know people are coming in. Uh, so if you could just talk to us, we'd appreciate that as we head towards 4 a.m. Um, uh, are there ways that if people are interested in what DSBK does that they could either uh, help you guys out, um, or maybe if they want to take that idea to their community, could you give some suggestions? All right, so you mentioned our website earlier. We have a lot of the information on there for how to contact us, how to you know get some of the lesson plans, some of uh, our materials off of there. So just to go over that again, that's www.astro.virginia.edu slash DSBK. So on that website, we talk about our mission statement, we try and give everyone all the information needed to get involved and, you know, take some of our ideas, spread it out into the world. And uh, I know you guys have a donation link there as well. Um, and uh, for a while there was an Amazon wish list. I don't know if that's still running, but uh, you guys were taking donations of anything from snacks to keep the kids fed during the after-school program to uh, <clears throat> uh, supply art supplies and things like that that were consumable. So uh, there are ways you can help that program out from afar. We're always looking for things to help, you know, make the kids enjoy it more and, you know, yeah. do a better job at the schools. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, 
We have a comment from Infinity Drew saying that star parties are the best ways to get kids into astronomy. I just came home from a lecture by Alex Filipenko at Mount Tal I can't pronounce that. <laughs> Talampes. After the lecture, we had a star party and the kids loved it, especially the green lasers. Never let the kids handle the green lasers, no, guys. No. no. Yeah, um, <laughs> don't. Not even undergrads. Sorry. No. Uh, but the way Filipenko said, Lick Observatory is in danger of losing its funding by next year. It's unfortunate that science gets hit really bad. So, uh, unfortunate news about funding, again, all around, um, but uh, really glad to hear that there are kids enjoying a star party somewhere else tonight, right now. So, that's really cool. Even though it's raining here, yeah. <laughs> we didn't get anything. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the funding cuts that we're facing here at CosmoQuest, these are kind of universal. They're coming down from Congress. It's not that we personally lost a grant. It's that the White House budget proposes cutting science education out of NASA entirely. And so what we face is universal. And then sequestration is causing a lot of cuts as well. Everything from the Blue Angels aren't flying to national parks are closing early to visitor centers are getting shut down to education programs are being told stay home. and. Uh, your donations allow us to help the entire community. When we're done paying our bills, we're going to work to contract out great people who are normally doing amazing things, but who are going to be losing their jobs as an effect of these budget cuts. Uh, we started hearing news about uh, people losing their jobs at other institutions last week. Yeah, sorry to tell you guys, you guys are also early career scientists, so <laughs> it's, it's not great out there, but we're all doing the best we can. So. Keep keep doing. So do we want to we want to uh, make sure to end this segment on a more positive note. Um, maybe uh, Abel, do you have any last uh, last comments or words on uh, either uh, DSBK or or your experiences in Singapore doing uh, city astronomy? Well, I think DSBK is a very important and valuable program. But what's really made it so great is that it's involved the community. Mm -hmm. And I think people really like the program because it's astronomy. It's something that kids want to want to learn about. And there you've not just taken something popular, you've gone and made it fun. Which I think it's a really great thing that DSBK has gotten so popular and well it's really it's really been great to work with DSBK, and I'm very sure a lot of people would also wish that you guys had a lot more people to, mm -hmm. to have after school clubs. But I think one step at a time, and a lot of it has to also come from the community. Uh, I think when people who have worked with DSBK graduate and go all over the world, we have we end up having an idea of how to do outreach and do it really great. And that communication and think, aspect, which is important, yes. even for yeah, even for I mean, if you're doing research or teaching. Yes, and I think it's helped a lot with my teaching as well, because you you tend to think in ways that uh, non scientists think. So mm -hmm. it's not just it's also great for grad students to participate. And perhaps some of you listening out there who are in different institutions might want to think about starting your own program. It's a lot of work, but it's also very rewarding. Yes, yes. It's very much a labor of love. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's something different from what you do every day as a grad student, and, and you benefit so much from it. And, and the part these guys aren't talking about because they're early career and not worrying about it, because uh, it worked for them. <laughs> is doing things like this opens the door for careers. Uh, I was part of Science Theater at Michigan State, a organization that took science into the schools through hands-on demos and stage shows. And that helped me land the positions I had later in life. Part of how Nicole got her job is I watched her doing amazing outreach at Dragon Con, doing um, hands-on demos at the uh, Star Party fundraisers each year. 
and I watched what she was doing on Twitter helping to communicate astronomy while struggling her way through her dissertation as all of us struggle our ways through our dissertations. And it was just a chance to see that she really was a solid communicator who had the experience and was ready to jump in. I needed someone to take over half my travel and she's done it. Um, I didn't make executive platinum on American Airlines last year, but if you but add <laughs> if you add our miles together, it's what I did the year before. And and so doing outreach, you're doing great things for society, and you're also getting the the life skills that you need to be solid educators in the future that will help land you jobs that ask you to be more than just someone who can write journal articles but to be someone who can communicate and uh, get those ideas across because those are skills you also need in grant writing which yes. is the next big thing that you're gonna get to learn how to do. Well I tried and then they pulled the funding call. <laughs> yeah, yeah Port Nicole had done all the research on what was gonna need to go into the NASA Rose's EPOS grant that we were going to be putting in that would have been due at the end of May um, we were <laughs> we were at the outlining and beginning to draft text stage, and we got a email from NASA saying that the no, the grant was um, indefinitely postponed. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, my grant writing skills are still waiting because I started, and then there was no grant. So yeah, it's all good. Um, Brian, do you want to uh, give in any last words um, about DSBK and the outreach that you're doing? I mean, I definitely agree with what Abel was saying about DSBK. I think it's a great gateway to science and to, you know, an interest in the world around us. It's a great opportunity to get kids, you know, really trying to think about what's important out there and to really know or really, to really appreciate the world as it is. So I'm glad that I have the chance to work with DSBK. I'm glad that the schools want us to come out there, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes in the next few years. And uh, in addition to the outreach and communication skills, you will get certain organizational skills, especially mm. as you get more sucked in in your third year. Uh, you get to learn how nonprofits run, so have fun with that as well. <laughs> it's a whole other layer of, of uh, job skill there for you. So um, thank you, you guys, both so much for joining us. Uh, Abel, yes. looks like you're going to enjoy the sunshine <laughs> for the rest of the day. We, so. we are envious of your beautiful weather as we get rained on. Yes, and uh, Brian, it's good to see you. Uh, I'm glad you're having a good time, and uh, enjoy your third year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, it's a transition to go from doing classes all the time to doing research all the time. Nice honeymoon year. Yeah, a little bit or a lot. I, I remember at the end of my third year, being so frustrated because everything I tried didn't work. And Scott Ransom looks at me. He goes, "Welcome to research." Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gonna have those this times. is normal. Yeah, that is normal. So. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, thank you for sharing the IR camera yeah. with us. Um, Right. And if you can tell us what it is, I was lost on the internet trying to find a good IR camera. Um, if you can share that out, we'll share it out with everyone else. Yeah, sure. email email me or, or or chat that at me. No problem. I don't know if it's this. I I don't know if there was ever an instruction booklet. I know there's one that Gail and I made one one night <laughs> um, in, in in our apartment. I don't know if that's still with the rest of the camera. Um, we uh, we had a space helmet. <laughs> it was silly. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you can share that out. Uh, I know UVA has it because there's an infrared instrumentation lab, and that's why we got to use it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that would be good if you can share that. And uh, thank you for joining us from Singapore. Uh, love your city. Hate your tall buildings for trying to look at things in the sky. And it's awesome to hear how you're making the best of it. Thank you for having me on. Awesome. It's been a great time chatting with you. Yeah. Good Very to see cool. you again. Good to see you again. Maybe yes. later I'll pull out the video. Actually, no, I never got sent the video of you being knighted, Abel, oh. at, our, at, our, at our dissertation party. <laughs> oh. I asked Kristen for it, and apparently someone's giggling too, cl too close to the microphone, and you can't actually hear <laughs> anything that they're saying. But uh, yeah, we have fun, too. Even when we, we work hard, we got uh, knighted at our dissertation party. So with a lightsaber. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. I'll All stop right. rambling. Thanks and, for having uh, me. What's that? Yes, thanks Thanks for coming. Thanks for waking up so gosh darn early <laughs> and to be on the show. So thanks, guys. Thanks.